Hey, Jonathan here. So I wanted to give an update on the best laptop for data science. Now, the last video I made for this got around 60,000 views and a ton of questions and comments. So I wanted to take the chance to address some of those and give a bit of an update on what I'm using now. I actually got a new laptop, so uh, we'll talk about that. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Also, I just wanted to point out as well that the laptop that I'm using isn't necessarily the laptop that I think everybody else should be using as well, which is why in the previous video, I did discuss a lot about these actual specific specs uh, that you can get in a laptop and what you should be looking for and what you can expect to uh, achieve as well. So depending on your circumstances, you might actually want to get something uh, different to what I have. So in this video, I'm actually going to go over a few other recommendations as well that might be more suitable for your, uh, for your circumstances. All right, now, okay. So some of the questions and comments that I got in the previous video, uh, I had a bunch of questions, uh, you know, about various laptops, uh, you know, like different gaming laptops that people were interested in buying. There were questions around the Ryzen CPUs from AMD, uh, the Apple Silicon M1 chips, uh, which are quite interesting, how much RAM they're actually using, um, and different questions like that. So, and I wanted to drill into a little bit more about uh, different cloud setups and different things as well. So let's, uh, let's kick off and get going. So a few things I wanted to clarify about um, uh, basically gaming laptops. Now, I think that I, I personally feel that a lot of times people kind of get into the sort of the uh, data science AI kind of space and they kind of think, okay, well, I, I definitely need to get a gaming laptop because it has a GPU and you need to have a GPU in order to do data science. Now, Again, depending on the type of work that you do and kind of where you're at, then maybe you do, maybe maybe you don't. Um, as mentioned, having a GPU is probably most beneficial for things like deep learning. And deep learning is incredible, it's amazing, but it's really good for certain types of applications which you may not need to do, right? So but in particular, it's good at um, processing images. Um, it's good at processing audio. It's um, maybe good for time series analysis, a few things like that. But, you know, a, a lot of times, uh, you know, say you're, you're dealing with some data out of a database or something like that, and, um, you know, you're building some sort of predictive model, then maybe deep learning isn't exactly the thing that you actually want to use for your purposes. So uh, it's just really something to keep in mind there. Now, uh, also with regards to um, with regards to gaming laptops, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of people were, who were asking the questions, maybe they're just doing some study or or, or something like that. Um, now, gaming laptops, whichever make or model it is, uh, they they tend to be first of all uh, a lot heavier. Uh, more expensive and a lot more noisy, right? So uh, these are just some of the things that you need to take in consideration, right? Um, because there they are serious <laughs> trade-offs that you, you need to, to consider here. Um, and this is, it's, they're only gonna benefit you during the model training time anyway, right? A and a lot of times when you're working through stuff, you, you're, you know, uh, maybe tweaking a little bit of code, you're exploring the data, you know, different, different things. Um, it, it's not all model training. So um, getting a gaming laptop is not necessarily the, the right thing to do. Um, these algorithms will work on CPU as well. They'll just work slower, right? But if your data sets are small enough, which they typically will be for study and learning, um, or if you're taking small, smaller samples of data, you can still get away with a CPU just, just fine. Uh, and it's not going to be an issue. If you do start to get bigger data, as mentioned in the previous video, you can kick things off to the cloud. Um, there's a few really, really good options. So for instance, um, uh, Google, Google Cloud, uh, they've, got, uh, they've got CoLab, and, and they actually give you free uh, GPU and TPU uh, access uh, without even having to 
buy the things because I mean, GPUs are actually really, really expensive. Um, and the other thing I should mention as well, that laptop GPUs are not full spec uh, GPUs either. So they're not the same GPUs that you get in the desktop versions um, of the computers. They, they actually have less memory. They, even though they have the, the same model numbers, they are a lower spec GPU. Uh, that you get that you get for the money, right? So just a lot of these things that you, you kind of have to be aware of. And so personally for myself, I would never buy um, I would never buy a gaming laptop uh, for machine learning. Now, if you so happen to be a gamer and you're like fully set on getting a gaming laptop anyway, uh, fantastic, great. Then you know maybe that's something that uh, that works for you. Um, but for most people, I would say, don't spend the money there, um, especially if you're a student, you need to carry the laptop around. Uh, it's gonna be a pain, <laughs> right? Uh, just cause it's so heavy. Um, go take advantage of cloud GPUs instead, right? If you're really, really clocking up a lot of time, everything like maybe maybe get a desktop or maybe get an ex external uh, GPU that you can plug into a laptop so that you can still get some more processing power at home. This is, a, is, a, is another potential option there, but I would personally not buy a gaming laptop. All right, so a uh, bit of time spent on that. Um, okay, so there's a few uh, few other things. So uh, Ryzen uh, chips, uh, the new chips from AMD, um, and, and these are different from the GPUs. It, when it comes to GPUs, don't use AMD, definitely use NVIDIA, right? It, because um, all, the, all the algorithms are only optimized for uh, in NVIDIA GPUs, right? Uh, but for CPUs, uh, you've, you've basically got, you've got Intel, uh, you've got um, AMD, and, and now you've got the Apple Silicon uh, chips and stuff as well, uh, which is really pretty exciting actually. So um, Ryzen chips and Apple M1 chips, um, they're both pretty exciting. Uh, they both seem to have really good performance in, in comparison to uh, the Intel CPUs. The AMD chips, they are still x86 architecture, which is the same as the Intel chips. And so uh, it's going to have better compa uh, compatibility uh, in a lot of cases, uh, which is which is kind of useful. Uh, the Apple Silicon M1s, on the other hand, um, they do actually have some really nice features. They have um, and they do have acceleration for uh, TensorFlow and deep learning stuff. Again, without necessarily having to have a GPU, uh, which is actually really pretty cool. Um, and overall, a, a a very, very efficient, uh, a very efficient architecture um, in terms of performance and uh, power consumption um, and everything. Uh, but they are using an ARM architecture, uh, which is not 100% compatible with all the applications available. Now, the migration has been, uh, the migration has been fantastic. Um, there's a lot of applications which have already been migrated. Um, and maybe there's a there's a few things which haven't. So for full compatibility, you're still better off with an x86 chip. However, if you you know want to get in early and you know you want to get the benefits of an Apple Silicon M1 chip, uh, I, I think they really are pretty good. Okay. So um, now, so I had a few questions about uh, you know a lot of people were surprised about the uh, amount of memory. Uh, that I had in my computer, um, only 16 gigabytes of RAM, you know, that for a lot of people really didn't think that was uh, enough. And uh, again, like, um, uh, as I mentioned, I, I would typically work with, say, five to 10 million records of data. And um, I, another thing that I should point out and stuff as well. So um, I was working at a data science team at um, HSBC and, um, Basically, in that team there, I was using a, a 2015 uh, ThinkPad, right? T450, right? Now, so this is a, this was actually a really old laptop and had 16 gigs of memory on this machine. Um, and I, I was doing, you know, like I, I was working with these data sets back on, uh, on this computer, um, you know, basically quite a few years back now. So, um, you know, you don't always necessarily need uh, the, the latest hardware to, to do things. Um, people were asking about very specific versions of, you know, like which generation of a computer that I, 
I've got it and everything. And, you know, I, I have upgraded my computer since then. But, you know, to be honest, like the computer specifications, they, they haven't massively uh, increased that much in the last five, five, six years or so. I mean, the, the biggest, uh, you know, like the biggest jumps, um, I, I think, are actually things like the Apple uh, silicon M1 chips and stuff is uh, has been pretty revolutionary. Otherwise, uh, there hasn't really been uh, that much performance um, gains, to be honest, um, in, in the last five years or so. If you're looking at some of these other ecosystems, and um, that's actually okay. You can actually still do a lot, and you can still get by just uh, just, just fine. And so, if you really were on a bit of a budget. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be pretty reasonable to go off and get like um, uh, get an old ThinkPad. Um, and people actually love the Apple, uh, sorry, not the the uh, Lenovo uh, ThinkPad T series uh, laptops because uh, which are used in organizations a lot because they're uh, so easy to upgrade. Um, so you know, probably like maybe the the T four sixties. Uh, would probably be a decent option, and that's like a 2016 laptop. So it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty old now, uh, but you know it, it actually has two memory slots in there, which you could upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, comes with SSD. Uh, you can even get it with an optional NVIDIA graphics card if you wanted to, which is uh, which is pretty awesome actually. Uh, and all of this in a 2016 laptop, uh, which is relatively easy to. Um, get replacement parts for. Now, I mean, in my last video, I talked about how I use an uh, X1 carbon. And the main reason for that is, is basically because it's really nice and thin and light. Um, um, is it a more expensive laptop? Yeah, it's a, it's a more expensive laptop. Does it perform any better? No, probably it doesn't really, um, it probably doesn't really perform all that much better than a uh, than an older T T four sixty. It's just it's just nicer, right? And but one of the trade offs with that, one of the trade offs with buying these nice new thin light laptops, which are quite nice to use, is that um, all the memory is um, now soldered on board. So it's not separate. You can't really upgrade it separately. Um, so if you did want that upgradability to get uh, more memory and RAM and you wanted to go to 32 gigs and all this kind of stuff, uh, then you kind of have to be looking for a laptop, which is maybe not quite as thin or as light, um, because then it will actually have upgrade uh, upgrade slots. And, and in terms of upgrades, I would say the yeah the ThinkPad T-Series, um, yeah, even the older ones uh, have been the best for that and uh, uh, massive following on those machines. So I'm actually using a couple of laptops now. So as mentioned, I um, previously shared how I was using an X1 Carbon. Um, I recently also bought an Apple M1 Silicon uh, Mac Book Air. So how does the new Apple MacBook Air with an M1 chip compare to the Lenovo X1 Carbon? Now, first of all, I want to say that um, the X1 Carbon is by far the nicest PC laptop that um, I've used of all the kind of laptops I've used over the years. So I used to have, uh, before this, um, the kind of popular Dell XPS 13 inch. And compared to this machine here, this is so, so, so much nicer. Uh, I, I think in in every way, um, it's lighter yet somehow manages to have a one inch bigger screen. Um, the screen folds all the way back. It's got a nicer hinge. Uh, it's got a, a way way better keyboard. Um, overall, um, the experience of this machine is just uh, a much better experience uh, to the point where if I were to today buy a, another PC laptop, um, it would definitely be um, a Lenovo machine, all right? So been really impressed with these machines here. As mentioned in previous videos, um, they now have way better support for Linux if you wanna do that as well. Um, also with Windows in general, the, um, the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL uh, version two uh, is actually pretty good for a lot of things. Make, uh, making development a lot better and easier. So 
Um, and the few of the benefits of basically having a Windows laptop, uh, I mean, okay, for personal use, like some people play games uh, as uh, one of the advantages. I'm not a gamer, so it doesn't really make uh, any difference to me. Um, but some of the other things, if you're working in enterprise, then most of the enterprise organizations I've worked with typically all use PCs. Uh, so there's a benefit there. And basically... Um, Excel and various applications that you might use, uh, various uh, you know trading platforms and different things like that, um, quite often work for PC. So there's some benefits of the PC there. Now, um, I recently purchased an Apple Silicon um, M1 MacBook Air, uh, and this is a, a really nice computer. So. For a while, I was somewhat reluctant to, to buy a Mac because they had a ton of issues uh, with overheating, butterfly keyboards, um, and, and then no ports and, and all this kind of thing, right? So it's a bit of a pain, but uh, with the new Apple uh, Silicon chips, you know, the, the thermals are so much better. Now you can get like a fanless computer, right? Uh, which performs like way better. The batteries last all day, um, uh, which is incredible. The um, And the speed and performance is really well. The computer never gets hot. Um, you never hear any fans running, uh, which, which is incredible. Now, there's some other benefits of Macs as well. So some of the reasons uh, that I um, bought, bought a Mac as well uh, is... I, I do a bit of work with um, startups and uh, all the startups that I work with use Macs. So a lot of times software development um, companies, they will be using Macs instead of PC, uh, basically because Macs are natively Unix based uh, is one of the key advantages there. So you can go straight into terminal. Um, as mentioned, you've got the Windows subsystem for Linux now for Windows, uh, but that's run in a virtual environment. Right, it's not natively just there, so it is actually it is a lot easier just to pull up terminal and just to um, have a, a Unix shell that you can just start using straight away um, is really nice. Um, other things, if you are interested in getting into any uh, iOS development, uh, then pretty much the only choice you have is to use a Mac. Um, but overall, it's a it's a it's a really nice machine. Um, Actually, I really like uh, I really like both of them, uh, but for now I'm predominantly using the the MacBook Air. And now the only downsides I would say is that because the Apple Silicon technology is so new, uh, it's not 100% compatible with everything. Now, everything I've seen so far has been pretty great. Actually, there's uh, lots of things have been converted over, uh, and so lots of things work uh, work great. Um, some comments have been around the use of Docker. So um, if you don't know what Docker is, it, it basically allows you to um, set up virtual environments, which is very handy for data science and programming, different things like that. Um, there, the main version of Docker desktop does not work, but they do have a preview Apple Silicon M1 version. And although it's still in test, the stuff I've done so far, I've been able to run and compile images, uh, all just fine. So um, yeah, it uh, it seems to work. And if for some reason, if that didn't work, uh, either I could go back to my PC or I could just do it in the cloud, right? So then it's actually not it's not too big a deal. It's it's not uh, it's definitely not a showstopper, even if this was your only laptop. All right. Anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.